Hi, I'm Northampton Mayor David Narkowitz, and welcome to the Mayor's Report, my cable television show on Northampton Community Television, in which I try to report to the residents of Northampton about the issues and projects that I'm working on across the city. Today I'm, rep I'm reporting to you from the second floor of the Northampton Fire Station um, outside the Public Safety Dispatch Center. When people think of the city's public safety uh, services, they often think about our police department and our fire department, uh, who are the, the folks who they see uh, in, the, in the trucks and the cars and responding to emergencies. But we have another set of public safety professionals in the city, and those are our emergency dispatchers. Uh, and they're often the first folks that people uh, reach out to in times of emergency. And they're uh, an integral part of our public safety system. And so I thought it would be interesting to take residents on a behind the scenes tour of this secure facility to meet Kelly Woods, who's the director of our dispatch center, and her, some of her staff, and show you the important work that they do 24 hours a day uh, as part of our team of public safety here in the city of Northampton. So let's go inside and meet Kelly and her staff. So we're now inside the Public Safety Dispatch Center, and I want to introduce you to Kelly Woods, who's the Director of Public Safety Dispatch for the City of Northampton. Kelly, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come in and, and see your operation here and spending some time with us. Um, so you've, been a, you've worked for the city as a dispatcher for 15 years, and That's you've correct. been the director since 2010. Um, how many folks do you have that work uh, on your staff? Tell the folks at home. We currently have um, 10 dispatchers one lead dispatcher who's a supervisor and myself the director. Okay and what, how do the shifts work for them? We're 24 hours a day, seven days a week, weekends, holidays. Um, we have three shifts that we work. There's a, um, eight to four, four to midnight, and midnight to 8 a.m. and there's always two dispatchers on at a time, sometimes three. Well why don't we dig right in and, and you can uh, you know introduce us to some of your staff and sure. then show me how this complicated console that you have to work at uh, works. Absolutely. Great. So now we're over at one of the consoles, one of the three consoles that, that your dispatchers work at. Correct. Give, give me a quick tour about what all these screens and, and numbers and, and buttons do. Sure. And how it works. The dispatchers are provided with tools to do their job essentially and everything needs to be located in this general area because this is where it all happens. So to the left we have some manuals. Um, if we need phone numbers or policies and procedures for the fire department, that is located right at the console, right within hand's reach. Um, these are the national priority EMD protocol. Um, the state requires all dispatchers to be certified in an emergency medical dispatch protocol. The vendor that we use is Priority Dispatch. And this allows a dispatcher to ask questions and make it um, consistent among dispatchers and shifts. So I see um, things like chest pain and drowning and headache and so correct. if a call comes in there's protocols that they can follow. Correct. A lot of people wonder why we ask so many questions and the reason why we do that is it kind of gears what we need for response and mm -hmm. how we can provide instructions. So if um, a childbirth scenario, we can give instructions on how to talk the father or the expectant mo mother through it and what to expect. Um, we provide CPR instructions, choking instructions. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to ask several questions in order to get to that point um, and to determine if it's just going to be an ambulance, a police officer in an ambulance, or the engine as well. Okay. Um, but all the calls are handled consistently the same. We also have one for fire protocol and police protocol. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives the dispatchers a, a tool and a direction to, to question the caller in and also use calming techniques. Mm -hmm. Um, the two screens that we see here as in the first bank of screens is our 911 console. To the left is um, when you call 911, the call information pops up. So there will be a phone number, the, ad, the name of the business or residence, mm -hmm. and their address. Mm -hmm. um, and there we can see a history, how many times they've called 911, if we have supplemental info, if uh, there's somebody who's mobility impaired mm -hmm. for, to say. They can voluntarily ask us to put that in our system. Um, we have the capabilities. This is all computer done, done by the computer. So it's just a point and click system. So we would use a mouse to actually answer the phone. Mm -hmm. And then it will take the GPS coordinates of the latitude and longitude and plot it immediately on the map. Okay. And we can actually see the closest cross street, which is really helpful, especially for um, the areas of town that 
um, there's a lot of residences in mm -hmm. and smaller streets. So and I'll that, give you, you. You just called, so that shows where we are right now. Correct. So I'll call 911 from here, and you can see actually how it rings. It has a very distinct ring, um, and how we would answer it. So it just takes a second. And now this is for the landlines. It'll ring in on one of these. And landline means the typical one. So that's okay. us calling. So you know that's a 911 Correct. call when you hear that. So I just click priority. And now it automatically came up with the information and it plotted it on the map here. Um, and it will tell, it says what time I called. Mm -hmm. And when I release it, I can either, I can transfer it if I wanted to. Say they were calling because um, they're elderly and they lost power and they can't find the phone number for Mass Electric. We can actually transfer them. Mm -hmm. um, you would be surprised how many people call the business line when they have a true emergency because they're, they're concerned that maybe they're bothering us. Mm -hmm. But um, vice versa, they'll have people call 911 for seemingly non-emergent yeah. issues. Yeah. So we process every call the same, the same professionalism. We don't ever judge. Mm -hmm. um, we try to educate the public. Exactly. Um, so those are the 911 screens. Okay. Uh, and if you call 911, another point is if you call 911 from a cell phone, it will ring up Northampton Control, which is the regional dispatch center here, and they handle all cell phone traffic calls from Worcester West. If you and call that's at the state police barracks correct. on North King Street. That's correct. Okay. Um, they will transfer the call to whatever community the emergency is happening in, and that will come in on a different set of lines, which is here. Okay. So if a call rings in here, we know it's a cell phone call. Okay. And it will, if it's a newer cell phone, it will plot it on the map as mm -hmm. to their location, and it will tell us within how many feet and the confidence. So it might say that it's 95% sure it's within 100 feet from where they're calling from. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it gives us a general area. And the nice, the interesting thing about that is we can keep retransmitting. If someone's driving, they say, I don't know where I am. We can actually see on the map where they're traveling okay. to. Okay, excellent. Um, this screen here, this is how we track our emergency responders and the calls that we have for service that are open. So on the left, this is all of our police officers and it's broken mm -hmm. down into the areas that they're covering. Yep. The officer radio number, their name, yep. um, and then these are our calls for service that are going on right now. Mm -hmm. It will indicate how long they've been on a call. So this particular officer has been on this call for 24 minutes. Okay. And then this is the ambulance and fire department screen. Um, it's very useful for resource management, exactly. but it also um, accurately tracks the times. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's an arrest or a traffic accident, they need those times in exactly. order to do their reports. Exactly. The dispatcher has to put in the calling party information, um, any descriptions, any narrative that the officer says. Mm -hmm. So this is used for court as well, all those documentations. Exactly, and it's all computer coded, so it's very accurate. And detailed and there's a record of it so that's helpful. Correct. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. We have other programs that we do utilize on the regular PC. Mm -hmm. We have um, the DPW does a fantastic GIS map that we use for the city. Mm -hmm. It has um, hydrant locations which are used when we have a structure fire or a fire and the fire department has to tap into a hydrant. Um, it will have, we can measure distances, so if we know the fire's happening at 123 Main Street and the hydrant's down at 122, we can measure exactly how much hose they're going to need. Mm -hmm. um, it shows just a bunch of different information for us, property owners. So when they arrive on the scene, you're giving them a lot of great data to, to make their jobs easier. Correct. To be able to respond appropriately. Correct. And yeah. we can also check the history of an address. If we get a 911 hang up, our policy is if it's a residence, we send an officer. Mm -hmm. We can actually look and see if we've gone there before, if there's mm -hmm. been any history that we need to be aware of. Say we know somebody, there's an elderly male that faints often mm -hmm. or has a cardiac history. Mm -hmm. We can relay that to the responders and then that might give us an indication that maybe an ambulance should be sent. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of responsibility, but also so getting the information. Mm -hmm. um, this is our radios. We currently monitor all the, each box or square indicates a channel that we have to listen to. Okay. Um, we listen to the main police channel. We listen to Western Mass law enforcement and fire. Mm -hmm. And that's used for if there's a motor vehicle pursuit coming up from Holyoke. They can communicate directly with our dispatchers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two fire channels. We listen to the school 911. Each school has a portable in their in their um, facility, and they can call, they can radio to us mm -hmm. if they're having an emergency. And the DPW because we do monitor after hours and we handle their after hours emergency calls. Because we have DPW personnel who respond to broken water mains or, or other kinds of uh, infrastructure problems that might happen. Correct. Or yeah. if a resident has a water leaking in or sewer leaking into exactly. their basement, we can contact them. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And then we have our, just our business line here. Okay. 
Um, it's just like the regular business line anywhere in the city. Um, the city of Northampton offices. It's a uh, voice over internet, mm -hmm. so it's done through the computers. And we actually have a backup phone system that mm -hmm. we can use if these, if we're having a problem with the voice, or the internet, mm -hmm. we can plug it into a copper wire so our phones don't go down. Mm -hmm. And that was, those are some of the lessons we learned through different emergencies and Correct. when we've had power outages for many days or so we're, I know we're always working with you and with all of our public safety teams to try to build in as many redundancies as we can. Correct, because so we, we want to keep that quality of service yeah. up for our And we want to keep this center operational 24-7. Absolutely. So people have a way to contact you. Um, so what are all these flashing lights up here? This is how we um, alert the fire department to a call. Mm -hmm. So if we get a call for service for the fire department, if it's a medical, because the fire department um, staffs the ambulance, mm -hmm. we would actually hit the ambulance only. That's going to activate a tone in the stations here and in Florence and turn on the lights so they know it's a call for service. Mm -hmm. And then we can um, transmit over the radios and overhead in the, in the stations mm -hmm. what the call is. Um, and we break it up into, there's different tones for ambulance only, ambulance and fire, fire units only, or all units. All units would be used for a structure fire or okay. a gas leak inside a building. Okay. How about when we, we often tell the public about our mutual aid system and how mm -hmm. um, we often have to call other communities for help and we provide communities for help. How does that process work in terms of your your center here? Sure, that's all done with pre-planning pre with the fire department um, and area communities and they give us a set um, guideline on mm -hmm. what we need to call for mutual aid. Mm -hmm. So we actually, if they get on scene and it's a fire and they say we need a second alarm assignment, we can actually open it up to that card and it will say call Northampton Control because we need an engine from Williamsburg, a tanker from Greenfield. Mm -hmm. It'll tell us exactly who to call. Mm -hmm. And your counterparts in the other communities have a similar protocol, and that's Correct. all part of the, the mutual aid piece of it. So Correct. that we're oh. able to sort of help each other out. Correct. And the dispatchers are tasked with being aware of and adhering to police and fire policies, not just the dispatch center policies. So mm -hmm. they know that if the fire department goes to a certain incident, this is what they have to do. And that's all defined by policy. But, they, you know, mm -hmm. that's just one more thing they have to remember. Exactly. Yeah, there's definitely a, this is a lot of multitasking that you have to do under a very high pressure situation. Absolutely. Life and death situation. Yep. And yeah. it's one of those things for seven hours, there could be nothing, the phone might not ring, and then all of a sudden, everything happens all at once. Mm -hmm. It could be five minutes of nonstop ringing, every line lighting up, and they can handle it. They, um, Based on their training, it's, mm -hmm. these are all pre-planning things that we've already done. We've prepared for this. The other thing that people may not realize that you guys also do are, are you know, we have the um, reverse 911 system. Mm -hmm. uh, so people may get those phone calls about snow emergencies or Correct. other kinds of emergency. And that's all handled by, by your office and your staff. And often that's a dispatcher's voice that they hear uh, at Correct. the other end of the line. Correct. Um, most often we, hit, we use it during snow emergencies, but we've used it during um, some major storm events. Mm -hmm. um, if we've had a child that's gone missing, we might use it. There's mm -hmm. a bunch of um, predefined times when we would use it. We'll use it, um, I just recently had to record a message for the water usage ban. Mm -hmm. yes. So just to get uh, public information out there, yeah. and then also for emergencies as well. And mm -hmm. We can receive it by telephone, text message, or email, or all three, or two. Mm -hmm. It's a really great tool. We also um, monitor the fire alarms, and that's what this this system is here. I don't know okay. if you can see it. Okay. Um, we monitor the fire alarms for different businesses in the city, mm -hmm. and we we monitor the burglar alarms for all the Northampton city buildings. Okay. So, give me an example. Like Stop and Shop has a fire alarm system in it. Mm -hmm. um, much like a home security fire system, and so Correct. if that's activated, yeah, it'll it ring right into okay. us. It'll it'll um, sound a tone. It will say fire okay. alarm. The dispatcher will actually touch the screen to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. and it will tell. If you see, there's uh, information down here. If I stop this one, okay, um, it'll tell us the address and Certainly what to alarm. send. Okay, okay, and I can see fire alarm goes off. You have to respond. You know, it may just be a malfunction that you have to restore or respond to. Correct, and we're also my um, we have to keep track of. Uh, Coca-Cola is on test, so we know that if their fire alarm rings in, we don't send somebody because they've already alerted to us that they have somebody working on the system. Got it. Okay. Wow. So this is uh, this is quite a bit of information that has to be processed and uh, all at once, and obviously in in life or death situations many times. So Correct. why don't you um, 
show us the rest of the consoles and maybe introduce us to some of the staff. Sure. All three consoles are set up to be identical, so mm -hmm. they can sit um, wherever and they're still at home, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, behind you, Mayor, is a uh, additional information. Mm -hmm. um, this is where we'll find our operations manual for the police and fire department. If there's any events in town, we try to make sure that we have that information available. Um, especially sidewalk sales or anything that's going to bring a mm -hmm. larger amount of people or street closings. A parade or some kind of a, Correct. a demonstration or some kind of a planned event like that. Correct. Because yeah. that way we really are a public information center. Mm -hmm. um, people call us for directions or times mm -hmm. that the parade starts. Mm -hmm. um, we have our center policies in here. Um, we keep our tow logs, so if a vehicle breaks down or an officer stops a vehicle and we need to now tow it, we mm -hmm. actually have that information mm -hmm. here. Um, DPW policies, mm -hmm. we also answer the phone for animal control when she's not in. Okay. So we have how to handle calls for animal control. And this is nice and accessible to everybody and it spins around so you can quickly grab something if you need it. Correct. So, and we yeah. also keep, you know, our cleaning supplies because we want to keep our dispatchers healthy. So mm -hmm. we have disinfectants, we have um, phone books and dictionaries. Mm -hmm. um, so that's okay. pretty much all that's in here. Okay. So now I'll introduce me to some of the dispatchers. That'd be sure. great. This is Lisa Day. Lisa has Hello. been with me Hello. since um, 1999. You. We started together on day one when they first went to civilian dispatch. Mm -hmm. um, so we were brand new. Um, she's got extensive experience in ambulance dispatching prior to coming here. Mm -hmm. um, she's also was worked on the road on the ambulance. She has risen through the ranks in here and decided that she wanted to come back to the job that she loves. So she went from the director back to a dispatcher because she wanted to actually be able to continue to do the tasks of the dispatcher. Mm -hmm. um, that's unfortunately something that you lose when you go into the office. Yeah. Um, but she definitely is one of my dis my best dispatchers. She's a trainer here, mm -hmm. um, and she really knows the city like the back of her hand. I, I rely on her a lot for local knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I always get great hear great kudos from the two chiefs and the, our police and fire just about you guys and the work you do here. So thank you for that, and and thank you because I know you know often the, the police and fire guys are the ones everyone sees you know that get uh, but you guys are involved in all of these calls you're at the front line of it and so thank you thank you very much i love it that's a great job and, mm -hmm. and change it for the world so excellent all right thank you and now we're going to move over to here to okay. amanda okay this Hi, is amanda, amanda Bassett. she's been with me for five years I actually think I might have trained her partially. <laughs> she is our Blackboard Connect Manager. That's our um, reverse 911. So the people that decide they want to be in the system or out of the system, Amanda actually will track that and keep keep an active list of who has opted out. So if, you know, God forbid we have a major emergency and even the people that have opted out, we need to get a hold of them. We have that list available. Amanda mm -hmm. works really hard on that. Mm -hmm. um, she's been training for two years now. She's a trainer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something you said earlier when we were meeting Lisa, you know, uh, we didn't always have civilian dispatchers and, and actually a lot of places still have um, sworn dispatchers, so it's a police officer or a firefighter, but many departments, many cities have moved away from that Correct. so that police officers are doing police work and, you know, firefighters are doing fire work. And, and now we have professional civilians that are doing uh, doing this type of work. Correct. They're definitely starting to make a career out of this. Mm -hmm. They're making it a long-term thing. There's so much extensive training involved yeah. in um, dispatching. So with Amanda being part of that, she comes from a customer service background, which is also something that we really mm -hmm. need in this, in this day and age and this job. Um, she came from restaurant work, so she's got a lot of the uh, multitasking People skills. People skills. And Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. She can handle multiple projects at once, yeah. um, seamlessly. And Amanda actually is one of my best call takers for hysterical callers. If somebody calls and they're really upset, Amanda just has this mm -hmm. way about her. She can bring them right down and get the information that she needs. Yeah. So she's a valuable asset to me. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the work you do every day and for letting us come in here and, and bother you a little bit and see how you do your job every day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so maybe we can uh, uh, go sit down and, and talk a little bit more about your department and, sure. and the work that you do, and, and uh, thank you. So thanks for giving us that quick tour and, and introducing us uh, to your staff. Um, Give folks a sense of the volume of calls that you handle here in the dispatch center every every 
you know, year, month, et cetera? Sure. It's actually really hard to quantify the number of calls that come through here because we the only um, record that we have is the actual calls for service. Mm -hmm. So if there's a traffic accident, we may get five to ten calls because oh. of all of the rise in cell phones and the businesses, especially mm -hmm. if it's in a highly populated area. Mm -hmm. But for the calls of service, um, so far in 2013, we've, we've handled 25,315 calls for service. Now, calls can come in in many different ways. They can come in through the 911 system in a landline, mm -hmm. through a cell phone, um, officer or responder initiated, and that could be parking, calling us on radio mm -hmm. about a fight going on. Um, the general telephone, uh, we actually have a lot of walk-in traffic down at the police department, as you're aware. Mm -hmm. um, and other calls of service might come in through the alarm system with the fire alarm monitoring mm -hmm. or um, through a well-being check system. But, so, but 25,000, that's an incredible volume of calls. Correct, and we're only in July. Last year, we handled four, just over 47,000 calls for service. Wow. So the dispatchers actually, um, so far, 2,500 came through the landline 911, and 1,200 came through cell phone 911. And mm -hmm. our telephone, there's been just over 5,000. Mm -hmm. So there is actually a lot of phone traffic. But again, the phone may ring five times for one event, and that also doesn't account for all the ancillary services that we do. You know, somebody calling for directions that we don't document, or someone mm -hmm. calling for animal control or the parking department. Mm -hmm. um, so we do actually handle a high call volume. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And talk a little bit about the the training that 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 um, you know we give the folks who work here as part of their job, and not only to, to to be a dispatcher, but then just the ongoing training that's necessary to keep them up to date on all these protocols that you've talked about? Sure. I'm actually really very proud of our training program. We have a, probably one of the strongest training programs for dispatch centers in the area. The state um, has instituted new regulations so for 911 telecommunicators that they have to take a two-day equipment class, so they have to learn how to use that 911 system that I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. They have to do a 40-hour basic telecommunications course, which covers you know, call handling and um, the telematics that they have out there, so OnStar, things like that. Um, and they also require the 24-hour emergency medical dispatching as well as the 8-hour CPR. Mm -hmm. So those are already state regulated. Mm -hmm. A lot of dispatch centers will just stay at that minimum, but we actually, I feel very strongly that the more tools I can give someone to do this job, the better they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Because when someone calls for a police officer or a firefighter, they think that they're actually talking to a police officer or a firefighter, so they have to be trained to think that way. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that is actually to take classes. So um, some additional classes that we have um, are active shooter mm -hmm. incidents, crisis negotiations, hostage negotiations, handling suicide callers, mm -hmm. um, stress and ID management, because it's a terribly stressful job. Mm -hmm. um, we have just a myriad of classes that either are hand, they're hosted by the state 911 department or I have to host classes in-house, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, so we give as many classes out there, domestic violence call handling. Mm -hmm. um, so just to get them to get to the level where they can actually dispatch. The training program for new hires is broken up into three categories. They have the classroom training, which are those classes that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. They do um, an in-house training. So basically, they said we set aside a week for police, a week for fire and EMS. And we actually will go through, so this is a police call. This is how we handle police calls. This is our police department. And then they're required to do 24-hour um, ride-along time with the police department. And then for fire and EMS, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because I want them to understand what's actually happening out in the field. Mm -hmm. um, so after they do the in-house training, then they do on-the-job training, where they actually sit with a trainer mm -hmm. for could be four weeks mm -hmm. where first I'll do the job as the trainer and if you were my trainee mayor you just watch me do the job and I would talk you through it mm -hmm. and then eventually I'll start letting you answer the phone and putting in the documentation in the computer and then eventually you'll take over and I'll sit back and we'll monitor you mm -hmm. you know it's a constantly evolving constantly learning process mm -hmm. once they're on shift they're being monitored we have to have continuing education the state now requires 16 hours of continuing education um, so we actually have five trainers on staff, and they will actually they they develop training programs mm -hmm. to teach their their coworkers. Um, we do peer education. We monthly I have staff meetings that require us to have a training in it. We uh, the actual we have the capability and the honor of taking part in the fire department training. As I told you earlier off camera, um, we got to take part in a extrication drill. Mm -hmm. 
but it's really great because we actually can see what they're going through and what kind of resources might we be able to lend to them on mm -hmm. the other side. Exactly. Um, and, I, and, and we're talking a lot about training. I also know um, for funding purposes, we also, uh, the state provides us with a certain amount of funding uh, for that as well and for some equipment as well that we get grants every year as through their 911 department. Correct. Um, actually, if you look at your cell phone bill, you'll see a 911 surcharge, and that actually will go into training the dispatchers as okay. part of the grant program. So we do receive, you know, we obviously we, we fund the department, but we also get supplemental funding for the state um, because they understand the value of these, Correct. keeping these uh, public safety uh, dispatch centers uh, fully trained around the state. Correct. Yeah. And what about, what are some of the things that are coming down the line? I mean, that's, you know, we look at that technology uh, that you work with every day. There's all kinds of new technology every day and every, it seems like every, even people's personal technology is constantly evolving so what are the things that you see on the horizon and 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 uh, the way that your industry is moving in the future? Sure. Um, like you said with the technology constantly evolving 911 has to keep up with that so there um, our next transition is going to be to next generation 911 or NG 911 mm -hmm. um, that is being controlled by the National Emergency Number Association Mm -hmm. Basically, all that is is uh, 911 will now be provided through a secure internet-based program, where you can, when you call 911, you can transmit data, pictures, video, and voice. So, um, if somebody calls 911 and they're in New York, for example, and somehow they call because they had a family member that lives in Northampton that sent them a picture of mm -hmm. a murder scene, we'll say, they can actually transfer that to us directly into our center. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. You know, so there are a lot of really good benefits to the next next gen 911 um, for the community that's deaf and hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. They actually have gotten away from the TTY because it is really cumbersome. Mm -hmm. um, they can actually now communicate through text or video sign, mm -hmm. uh, and that's information that can get transmitted to the dispatch center. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of really good things. The only foreseeable issue that I can that I can gather is that it's going to affect the dispatchers very much so. If they're getting pictures and videos of crime scenes yeah. or you know, a suicide or something awful, mm -hmm. that has, that's going to weigh in on their stress and ID management. Um, that's also going to, you know, burnout might be a little bit quicker. We're going to yeah. have to change, we're going to have to ramp up our training mm -hmm. to better prepare them how to handle these calls. And all this information is going to be used for court and evidence. You know, we yeah. essentially become um, Evidence collectors. Part of the chain of, uh, of evidence, uh, exactly. Correct. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for spending the time with us today and, and giving me this tour. And as I said at the outset, and I've said it also throughout, you know, you guys are a key part of our public safety team. And, and uh, you know, uh, again, police and fire, you know, often get called heroes, but you guys are also heroes. And well, I, I think back to um, the sentencing uh, for the arson. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, trial, which I attended, and I know the DA, one of the first folks that he recognized uh, were our dispatchers who, um, you know, on that horrific night when all the fires were happening, you know, your staff members just handled that so calmly and so coolly, and, uh, and so I, I hope people have a chance to listen to that tape to really get a sense of, of what you do and, and, and how important you are to the whole public safety effort. So thank you. And, uh, and I know that um, you know, we'll be talking about those new tr uh, technologies. And uh, obviously, I want to do what I can to work with you to make sure your folks get the training you need and that we can make sure we have the best technology. Because uh, you know, public safety is one of the most important things to our quality of life here in the city. And it's one of the things that makes us uh, such a great community so thank absolutely. you absolutely you're welcome and you. the, in closing i just want to say as well to the best information out of this whole thing is that if people need us to call the dispatch center mm -hmm. a lot of times they think oh well it's a police thing i'll call the police department directly yeah. we actually have tools to handle these calls and give instructions so it's mm -hmm. best if they call us direct and then we let us do our job and figure out who to send and give mm -hmm. the information um, but you know i really am very proud of my dispatchers and just our level of service and the customer service that we provide to the community. Great. Okay. And I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Mayor's Report. Um, as always, if you have comments or suggestions for future programs, uh, you can call my office or send me an email at mayor at northamptonma.gov. Um, always want to hear your ideas and, uh, and look forward to uh, seeing you during the next episode. Thank you.